Hi, this is a little um, tutorial video on the cargo towing add-on for Lightyear, which gives any rotorcraft, helicopter, tilt rotor uh, the ability to use long line and winch based cargo. Um, there's two ways of setting it up depending on what way you launch your flight gear. But the first thing you need to do is actually download the add-on and unzip it to a folder somewhere on your hard drive. The link for that download will be in the video description below. So, you've downloaded it, you've unzipped it. Now, we have two launchers. One on the left is FG Run, which is the classic way of starting flight gear. Uh, you can still use it with modern flight gear if you know what you're doing, or the one on the, the right here is the QT launcher, which is the one that ships flight gear currently. So, first of all, we'll do FG Run. The yeah, usual main starting page is one with the currently selected aircraft. But if we go down to the bottom and press Previous, you get to this screen here. And this is the screen where you configure all your scenery directories, aircraft directories, and various other bits and pieces. Top line here, executable. We need to add this line in here. Dash dash add on equals and it's the path to where the add-on is, the add-on folder. Okay, yeah, add that there. Next, and that's it stored. It's ready for use. On the QT launcher, you have a button called Add-ons. Click that. Then click on Add. Again, go to the directory where you've downloaded your zip, unzipped it, select it, and it becomes available. Job done. Right, so you've got it loaded, you've got it well, configured to run with flight gear, it runs all the time with flight gear in the background from this point onwards, so let's get into flight gear and see how it works in the sim. Right, here we are in the mail. Uh, now, if you have set up the add-on correctly, it will appear in the top menu here up at the top left. If you can't see your menu, press F10, and it should appear. And you get the option called Cargo Towing. This is where all the stuff's configured. So, let's go to x and the helicopter and have a look at what's going on. We'll do this. So there we are, we've got the Hamelon, sitting pretty in the sunshine. So, you get three options, cargo ranging, rope, and cargo settings. Uh, so, we'll go to the rope settings first, because it's more appropriate to get it set up first. Right, in this box, top line, you have connection type, hard docked, and long line. Hard docked essentially removes the rope, because you're using it whatever other internal cargo. Uh, long line puts a line on. You see there's a line appeared here at the bottom, but it's not correct yet. Uh, you can select if it's a rope or as a cable. And you can select here if the cargo affects the way the rope behaves, which is always a good thing you want more realistic. Now, in this little box, slider box here, there's a number of presets for different helicopters and flight gear. They're not all there, but there's a lot of them there. Uh, if, you, if you're flying one that is there, you simply can click on it and it sets the rope and everything up to suit that helicopter. If you don't have a configuration, these sliders on the right will set the rope up for you. Uh, we're, it's almost in the correct position 
under the rotor mass, so but it's underground. So I want to change the offset value to bring it to ground level. Here we go. There we go. Uh, you can also change the position using the sliders. So you can put the rope where it should be, match it to the helicopter. That's the XYZ positions as well. You can change the thickness of the rope as well. Now uh, you can also set a winch if you need one to work with a winch. Well, I'm doing winch in this case, we'll do long line. Okay, the uh, last box would be the cargo position and the helicopter. Some helicopters will have a defined cargo point you can use, like this one. Others will not, and some will have none at all. If you have none at all, it will probably assign it to a default position. So we've selected the correct position in this helicopter. We've got the rope set up. It's sitting pretty on the ground there, all curled up, ready to use. So that's the rope done. Next we want to do the cargo. Cargo settings. There is a number of different cargo packages available. Uh, different types of cargo, all different weights. There's even a stackable set here which will actually build radio towers using stackable components. Which is quite difficult. If you want to harvest the Christmas trees, you've got the tree farm one. Uh, there's, no AI, there's an AI scenario one, but there's no AI scenarios yet. Um, and there's the military cargo set as well, which I've just selected. Tells you there, cargo military. Um, it gives you cargo 1 to 7, or whatever it will be in the package when you download it. it. Tells you what the item is, and then it tells you the weight. So let's say cargo 6, it's a WMIK, which is a type of Land Rover, and it's 6,613 pounds in weight. Okay, that's what that means. So we're going to select that, that loads it into the system. Now you've got options here for persistent cargo or random cargo. If you choose either of these, if you choose persistent, whatever you put the land over, it will be there every time you start flight gear. It will remain there ready for use. If you choose random, it will place it somewhere nearby but randomly, and it will be there randomly generated every time you start flight gear. If you do not tick either box, uh, your, wherever you place your item will be just for this session and this session alone. You also have an option down here at the bottom for ranging on and off which helps you get on target when you're doing it on your own. So put that there. Okay, so we've got the Land Rover selected so let's place it. There he is out there, put the runway there. Okay. So, He's set, your rope's set, you got the range it's set. It's time to go into the chopper. Now we'll get the engine started while we're doing that, we'll go through the keys. Um, it's got an auto hook on and auto hook off function, which is control O. There. So when the cargo is within hook range, it will hook on and you can fly off with it. And you can press Control O again once once you're ready to drop it off again, and the cargo should disengage itself. You can also do it manually using Shift O and O, and you can also, if you know what you're doing with your joystick configuration XMLs, you could probably assign that to a button or two buttons in your joystick if you have spare buttons you don't use. Make it easier so you don't have to take your hands away from your sticks when you're trying to find choppers, which is never. Right, let's go and see if we can get ourselves a Land Rover. If you can see down here name and range, the name field will be filled in with a cargo number when you have connected, so you know you've got a connection.
up in action, finally. So let's have a look at the hook. Come, the middle nice. Yep, we have a Land Rover hanging off us. So there we go, we've got connection, and basically that's how it works. Um, that's it, the add-on is updated frequently at the moment, so it's always best to keep an up-to-date version handy. Um, that's it, as I say, cargo affects the helicopter, it affects the performance, the weight does affect the, the capabilities of the machine. So, if you are trying to lift something that uh, is way beyond the capability of helicopter, you might get lucky, you might not. But there you go, that's all part of the fun. So, that's basically it. We have the cargo. You can fly with it, you can do what you want with it. And uh, you have fun with it. So, enjoy.